What is time for a health report? And joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent Lino Mudu with the latest immunization news. Lino. Well, World Immunization Week is underway. It's a global public health campaign to raise awareness and increase rates of immunization against vaccine preventable diseases around the world. The World Health Organization says the rise of new and underused vaccines is increasing globally. The WHO says global vaccination coverage has stalled at 86% with no significant changes during the past year. However, an estimated 19.5 million infants worldwide are missing out on basic vaccines. Meanwhile, this year is the eighth African Vaccination Week held April 23rd to 29, which aims to strengthen immunization programs across Africa. Among other things, by increasing awareness of the importance of every person's need and right to be protected from vaccine preventable diseases, particularly every child and woman. Now joining us in the studio is Dr. Fulake Olayenka. She is immunization team leader of maternal and child survival program with JSI, which is a USAID funded program. And joining us live via Skype is Guy Bukongo. He's senior policy and advocacy officer in Paths Advocacy and Public, Public Policy Program in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Path is a leader in global health innovation. Dr. Olayenka, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. And Guy Bukongo, we appreciate you joining us from the DRC. Thank you. So let me start thank with you, so you with Dr. Fulake. It is World Immunization Week. What is the significance? and the impact of such a week when, it, when we look at global immunization work. Yeah, thanks so much for that. You know, this, this is really a very important time that we're able to draw focus on immunization and the power of vaccines. And, you know, setting aside this time allows us to have conversations uh, with a whole range of people, um, from those who are leading this at country levels, from, from communities, to donors, to all stakeholders, to really re-emphasize the value of immunization and also to, to celebrate the achievements that have been made and also look at the gaps that still remain. So it's really an important time in the year that we're able to uh, bring a focus around immunization. Uh, very well. And Gibo Congo, how do we take conversation to action? For example, with Africa Vaccination Week, what is happening in your country? Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Um, this week we have, um, I mean, um, 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 an activity uh, focus on, uh, on resource mobilization. And this is an advocacy activity that is going to bring together um, some decision makers within the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Budget, Ministry of Finance to come together and other partners to reflect on how um, DRC can best uh, uh, cover the gap for immunization and mobilize more resources. And Dr. Fulake, resources is uh, so important. Now, we know that governments have a part to play. They have the role to play. The international community also is playing a role. How do we really uh, increase the donors' uh, understanding of strengthening immunization and make immunization a priority in funding? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the, one of the, the greatest ever interventions that we know in public health today is vaccination. And it is effective. Not only is it effective and that it works, it's also cost effective. And we know that there's a huge return on investments on routine immunization. Um, there's been studies that have been done uh, more recently. Um, we, we, we find that for every $1 spent on immunization or immunizing a child, there's $16 return on investment. And in addition to that, there's up to $44 in terms of saved um, uh, cost of hospitalization, but also the ability to contribute to the economic growth of, of that particular community. So there's a huge return on investment. So when you look at it, for donors, this, uh, this is a wise investment uh, in terms of being for their, for their funding to go farther, uh, but it is also a wise investment for countries to make in investing 
to ensure that their populations are healthy and that they, they survive, but not only that they survive, but that they actually develop and achieve their full potential and contribute to the economic um, development and growth in that country as well. So, uh, Guy Bukongo, Dr. Folake just mentioned the importance of vaccination, not only economically for country, but also as a public health measure. Talk to us about the, the required vaccines in, uh, for children in the DRC's routine immunization. Yes, we have um, uh, eight uh, vaccines. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, the yellow fever vaccine, the other one the uh, pneumococcal vaccine, um, we have the, uh, I mean, um, um, polio vaccine, which is injectable, and uh, the tuberculosis one. Uh, we have also a vaccine uh, on measles, an oral polio vaccine, but also uh, the tetanus vaccine. So these are vaccines that are used for uh, the routine immunization uh, in DRC. And what is the current state of immunization in your country? We, you mentioned uh, the vaccines that are required, but what is the current state? Uh, how is vaccine, vaccines reaching children, for example, in rural areas as well as the city? Tell us about that. Yes, um, there are many challenges uh, when, we talked about, when we talk about vaccine to reach uh, children in community because, uh, as you know, DRC is big. And uh, children um, can access vaccine, but th there are also some challenges that uh, um, community faces. But um, the EPI use, uh, I mean, an approach called um, reach every child where the uh, they are, uh, every children, sorry. And this approach helps to define some strategies that help to really make sure that children can get vaccinated despite the fact that geographical uh, issues and some cultural issues can prevent children to access vaccine. But there are a lot of, I mean, uh, efforts that are being conducted both at the uh, provincial and national level to help children to, to access vaccine. Now, when we look at uh, access to vaccine, in general, we know that health illiteracy is a major problem. And I wanted you to talk to, to us, Dr. Folake, about the fact that education is a driver when it comes to health inequity. Mothers that are uneducated are most likely not to vaccinate their children for various reasons that we can elaborate. Can you touch on this issue and how it could be addressed? Yeah, that, that's a really important issue because when you look at the inequity, in vaccination. There are a couple of drivers that, that we know. One of them is the, the mother's education level. Uh, another one is poverty. And uh, we know that these are, you know, what separates those that get vaccinated and those that do not. And so being able to um, align programs that ensure that a mother gets edu education as well as ensuring that their means of livelihood is increased are important components to ensuring that children will be immunized equitably. I mean, that is on one side. Uh, the other side is ensuring that the services are reaching communities where they are. Um, and this is our ability to, to use data in ways that help us identify where these unimmunized live, where they're located, and being able to provide um, flexible, of approaches that are tailored to the specific context. So for instance, the approach you would use in an urban slum area would be quite different from a rural, remote, and hard to reach yes, area. Yes. So again, being able to tailor immunization programs uh, in ways that can reach the target populations are important. So going back to the point on uh, a mother's education, programs uh, that align with the education sector, with the development sector, that allow us to um, ensure that the, the mother is able to advance in her education, but also health knowledge as well is important because it transforms not only her own home, but also that of the community. So okay. critical. Great, and uh, Gibo Congo, I would, like, uh, I would like you to talk to us about how Congo is implementing the Addis Declaration on Immunization, which is uh, really something that uh, African countries are, are trying to implement to ensure that the gap 
is, is uh, reduced in uh, immunization. What is Congo doing? What is the road, roadmap in your country? Thank you so much for this question. Um, actually, the DRC has uh, developed uh, a roadmap. And this roadmap um, is, uh, is contextualized based on, on the context and the gap here to be, to be covered. And this uh, roadmap will also be launched to, today uh, during the, the, I mean, the dinner event that I've talked about. And uh, it will help to, to really see how efforts can be, uh, I mean, uh, increased to, to make sure that the Addis Declaration is really, is fully implemented in DRC. And this is actually a great step that the country has made to mention, I mean, to, to, demonstrate, uh, to demonstrate the commitment, the political commitment to implement this, but also to make sure that each one, uh, uh, all partners, include the government, know exactly where uh, we are going in terms of uh, improving the immunization in DRC. So then what is the way forward, quickly, before we wrap? Uh, Guy? Sorry? The way forward. Okay, um, after that, uh, the, the, there will be another meeting to discuss uh, clearly on, 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 uh, on uh, which, uh, I mean, of the channel of funding from the national to the provincial level. As you know, the DRC decentralized. The same effort will also be conducted at the provincial level to make sure that uh, provincial government are also involved in the process of improving immunization at their level. Okay, thank you so much for joining us from the DRC. We appreciate your thank time. You. Dr. Fulaki Ulayenka, so it was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that was uh, Dr. Fulake, Fulake Olayenka. She's immunization team leader of maternal and child survival program with JSI. And Guy Bokongo, senior policy and advocacy officer in Pathis Advocacy and Public Policy Program in the Democratic Republic of Congo, joining us today. And that's our health report for today. To stay in touch, find me on Twitter at Linor Mudu. Vincent, back to you. Thank you. Very good information. Thanks a lot, Lenore, and be sure to watch Lenore Madu's health reports every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Africa 54.